GM friends, and thanks for tuning in to DeFi Logic's TA Tuesday show, live in our Discord server at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We have a partnership with Blowfin, and our eval goes live on Astrobit Marketplace. Links are in the description below, where you can join our server for discounts and to learn more. In today's community call, we'll review charts for Bitcoin, ETH, Stole, Popcat, Pepe, Render, and for legacy markets, S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, US Dollar, Gold, and finally, the scary looking yen. And with that, over to Eddie. So starting a little bit different this week, going to look at GME in honor of Roaring Kitty coming back to the market, potentially saving everything. So initially, after his tweet came out Sunday afternoon, the market GME gapped up. The initial thought process was to wait for the gap fill. I look at these a lot. I know you folks look at these a lot too, but I'm starting to change my tune. I think that I'm going to get left behind because this is just like a bunch of the retail of retail king, right? It's just like, Nobody who knows anything in the world about anything just buying because of some dude. So I'll probably get left behind over and over again. So if you want to potentially ride the wave, don't listen to me because I'm probably not going to get in. We left another gap, so I'm just going to look for the gap fill again, honestly. I am not cool with just fumbling in on a lower time frame. It, it doesn't make sense, I think, just because there's so much volatility. Like, it shows that we already filled this gap, but there's still this one here, too. So, I don't know. It's, it's tough to read, but it's hard to say how high we're going to go for some pretty decent resistance right now and it's it's doing it's having strength in it so i think an alternative option is if we can get some above here might be something to look at as well i imagine a hundred dollars is going to be pretty decent resistance because of it being a hundred dollars that basically capped price last time with the blow off top so i don't know interesting amc is also basically doing the exact same thing and memes are, are running again in, in crypto but memes always run so that's what i'm looking at here is just i just want some of this price section to get filled in like the way it looks it doesn't have to fill it in but i'm perfectly fine missing out on the trade on to bitcoin doing nothing like usual i don't really see this stopping anytime soon i think it's just going to top and go down slowly over the summer right now what i'm looking for intraday short of this move already yesterday i'm out for now because it's just a very range bound environment so it doesn't make sense to like try to keep anything into a swing right now i'm just looking for the short right here long over here if we go down first i won't short that but if we go up first i will long that so that's basically what i'm looking for is short into this zone tp here look for longs down here i imagine we'll get a pretty decent bounce here but it'll probably be a bounce for shorting and then what i drew i think we're just going to do that i'll just short and long each little two percent move because that's mental illness right but it's what i do ethereum literally there's no point of it so we'll move on so the coin that actually matters. Pretty weak too. Bearish price action. I think it can probably hold this low, but it's hard to say. There's nothing really actionable to do on it. And if you think right here, any in this area is fine for spot because I don't think the bull market is over. I do think that this will still play out. It's just going to probably not turn around till the summer's over, maybe. I, I really don't know. You have some pretty obvious lows too. If you get them ran with reclaims, then that's a pretty slow trigger as well. Honestly, a short down into that looks pretty good as well, too, because the daily RSI is just rejecting, putting in really bearish candles on the daily, too. I don't want to short this right now, to be honest. Like really, that will look really good. I'm not going to take it, but it just doesn't look that great. I think we do probably take out this these lows. One coin that is looking good, that was the recent trade I had. This actually looks distributive also. I don't know. It just looks coin is changing hand to me. So the people who are early, I know we were pretty early into this coin, like in the Discord. So everybody in DeFi Logic, if you bought when it was first mentioned to bot, Sloth, I think, mentioned it first, and then I was talking about it shortly after as well. We're up fucking huge. So everybody else that's up huge as well, who had fat stacks, is probably taking profit, which is what it looks like. But it also looks like people are still buying stuff too. So it's tough to say, really. I can make bullish arguments on it by saying that this looks like, a, like one of these patterns that usually ends by going up. Right? You can also say that this is your support, but other than that, it looks, I don't know, it, it looks confusing. It looks like it doesn't know what it wants to do. In that case, I've already taken some profit when it made the new all-time high on this Saturday. So if you haven't yet, it probably makes sense to take out some. I still hold like 80%. This is your like daily market structure. So if you start closing below this, then you probably want to get out. But I would most likely do it on a three-day or a weekly. It's the same market structure on three-day and weekly. So that's actually a really good level. I wouldn't necessarily put, like, close my position if it just closes right here. I would want maybe two or three closes below it. 
which by then you're probably so far down, which sucks, which is why I was saying, if you haven't taken any profit yet, you probably should. But as long as we stay above this, go higher, I think this is our line of the sand here. It does make sense to fill in this price action too, it's just very inefficient. So this wouldn't be horrible if it's closed a day or two below here, as long as it reclaims it. So I guess moral of the story is like, if you're holding from the lows and you haven't taken some out, you need to take some out. Or just be okay with it coming back down here and just ranging for a while, like WIF is doing. One of the best coins in the market. I think if you ever are bullish on Ethereum, you should just buy this instead. It's looking really good. It front ran my zone that I wanted to buy by a little bit. Oh wait, never mind. does not even come close to it yet. So I might not get that fill. We'll see. If it comes down, that's where I'm looking to buy. You'd want to layer your bid so your average entry would be like right there. You would just be aiming for highs. Other than that, I'll probably just wait for it to form like a triangle thing and buy a breakout. This coin likes to do that. So that's what I'm looking for with this. And last one's RNDR. It's tough because this was looking so good. Now it's looking so bad. Maybe down here, like you could start buying this lowest part of here. And then if you haven't gotten in by the time it reclaims here, then you're, that's like your super easy trigger, right? And you would just go like that with whatever low it creates, aim for some highs. Really don't want to see it going any lower than that though. So it is a pretty good spot to start just bidding right here because anything lower and then it just looks like shit. And we're still looking for these highs for sure. But yeah, other than that, market looks like shit. Hit market indeed. If you enjoy our content, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more crypto trading and overall market content. And with that, over to GeForce for the legacy markets. Thanks, Pepe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards than I normally do. I did that last week and uh, the theme is still the same. We're talking about inflation. So what we're looking at chart wise, this is a daily chart. And as you guys know, I always do daily charts. This is the 10 year uh, bond yield. And uh, back here is the first of the year back in uh, January 2024 this year. And it's just gone up significantly. The issue is whether the interest rates are working or not. So how is trying to pause this pause is uh, an issue that i talked about it's like taking antibiotics and if you don't take the full cycle then the, the infection continues today this is an article seven days ago but today citadel's ken griffin uh citadel's a huge private equity fund says that the fed must keep the rates higher for longer today he said you actually have to break the back of inflation i tried to get that quote but it was so new that the news wires didn't send it out yet so he's in the same uh, state of mind that you just need to actually break the back of inflation or for me going through the whole cycle of antibiotics to make sure that the infection is totally over with. And you can see that the 10 year yield is still going up. It came down for a little bit here because we're trying to think, OK, what's going to be the next move? But as you can tell from the first part of this year, everything is just going up. So that is the U.S. 10 year yield and the i think it's actually going to get the five it right up here we're looking at a high of here of a 4.7 but if it gets to five then we're looking at a double digit mortgage rates and the economy is not going to like that at all okay moving on to uh, the s p 500 this chart is still a daily chart and i'll focus in a little bit more on this the s p basically is coming up to a double top it's a uh, here i had a double top back in in march 21st and april 1st was the second part of the double top so we're trying to hit that level and get up to that level but we're above 5200 but this we're starting to stall out the reason why we're starting to stall out again is economic data this morning the ppi came in a, a little bit hotter than anticipated the ppi is a producer uh, price index so how much it costs for people to uh, produce our products Tomorrow is CPI, which is Consumer Price Index. That's going to be a big one. We're going to see if that comes in higher as well. If it comes in higher, then the market will go down below 5,200. If it mellows out and if the CPI is a little bit less in expectations, then we're probably going to climb a little bit higher. We're looking at the standard deviation line, which is floating around 5,100 right here. It's starting to go up, but that can change in a second. That is just no man's land at the moment. Moving on to Dow Jones 30. This is a cleaner chart. We can look at, we had a double top here again in March 21, just like the S&P. Second top on that double top was April 1st, right here. We've gone down, as you guys can tell, and then we've had a huge gap, basically on good economic news and what the Chairman Powell was saying. And now we're trying to get back to that double top. This chart is looking more bullish. When you look at the standard deviation line right here, it's pointing way up compared to the S&P 500. 
and it's actually it's hit the 2x band the upper 2x band one two three four trading sessions in a row last four so dow jones is looking stronger and it actually mentioned last week that dow jones is leading things which is uh unusual nasdaq usually leads Okay, moving on to the dollar index. You can see that it's downwards and sideways. This is explaining what crypto's doing, but they're actually running parallel, which is unusual because usually this is an inverse correlation to crypto and the dollar index is going down. Even though it's going down, the dollar is going up against the yen, which will be the last chart I show you, which is interesting because the dollar really doesn't have any strength, which can give you some underlying issues with the Japanese economy. We'll talk about that in a minute, but the, the dollar index is going sideways and down. It's running in correlation with crypto, which is unusual. Moving on to gold. I've been talking about gold for months now because of this parabolic move that we've had. And you can see here it, it whipped up at 2400 twice. The first one was here and that was on April 12th. And then the second one was here on April 19th, but it whipped back down and never closed above 21. 2400. I'm trying to look for a close here. So it moved all the way down to the standard deviation line right there. And then it moved down to the lower 2x band. And since then, which is below 2300, right here at 2284. And since then, it's gone up. It's trying to push back up, get above that standard deviation line. And today it's trading at 2348, close to 2350. I think it's going to try and push back up because we've had a good day which was last thursday on uh, may 9th so i think it is going to push back up to 2400 and if we get a close of above 2400 that'll be an all-time high for gold then last but not least is the uh, u.s dollar versus the japanese yen so the strength is apparent on this chart and it's just been going up up so the u.s dollar is strong against the yen then it's pulled back last week it really pulled back uh, the first of uh, May, excuse me, and then pull back all the way down below the standard deviation line. And then it had a hard line right here at 152.81. So that's how many yens to the dollar. And now the dollar is coming back up. So this is contrary to the XY, the dollar index, where that's going down. But against the yen, the dollar is significantly higher. So you can see that even though it does it flattens out way back here goes up flattens out right now we're looking at some volatility at a massive high of dollar against the yen then it whipped down here within seven trading days and now it's gone back up and i expect it to hit up at this level again at 157.7 or 157.8 but i think we're going to form a, a double top this would definitely be a double top and then after that point we'll see where it goes from there okay pepe i'm done with my charts over to you all right, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week at 10 a.m. Mountain Time in the server or for the recording on YouTube. We have our Astrobit lifetime promo code. Well, it's actually for eight years because that's the maximum amount of time that we can do it for on the system, but 20% off for the next five days. GM friends. Join us next week in Discord for TA Tuesday at t5logic.com.